Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. I want to update you guys on some Zen 6 stuff which is floating around concerning Medusa, which is the code name for the client, aka Ryzen implementation of Zen 6. We're going to talk a little bit about the architecture and some other little bits and bobs. And then we're going to move on to the release date for RDNA 4 because I have a small update for you all. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also of course sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. But let's begin with actually an AMD employee because it helps set the stage. So um, I'm not going to name the employee, but they got a little wordy on LinkedIn and uh, they essentially stated that Nirvana is the code name for Zen 5's CPU core and Morpheus is the code name for Zen 6's CPU core. But we've also heard another code name and that is Medusa. And as I alluded to at the beginning of this video, that is the client platform code name. So that basically is for not only the desktop, but for mobile as well. In a few videos now, I have said that AMD are essentially gonna be pretty much combining the packaging and the way that these chips are produced is going to be much more intel like so they can essentially be almost thought of as dual purpose now obviously there will be some differences for example one will be well you know socketed into let's say a motherboard and you'll be able to do that yourself and that's not exactly so easy with a laptop cpu so obviously there are going to be some differences but ultimately speaking AMD are going to be essentially reusing the same IOD and much of the packaging technology between the uh, desktop and the mobile side of things. And this is for a lot of different reasons. So Everest on Twitter, or if you prefer, Ulrak29, actually a few days ago posted a joke post for the PS6. And here you can see that there are eight Zen 6D cores, as well as a bunch of RDNA 5 workgroup processors and so on. Now, that was of course a joke and that is not the specification of the PlayStation 6, but he also adds, you know, um, yesterday, uh, that uh, memes aside, Medusa has an RDNA 5 iGPU skipping RDNA 4. He does add, of course, that of course the specifications are going to be much different to that. He was just joking around with that. However, the core of the message remains the same. We will uh, see RDNA 5 based iGPUs in the Medusa client. Now, to my understanding, this is pretty much correct. So RDNA 3, as you probably are aware, is found in discrete GPUs such as the uh, 7900 XT and so forth. And then you have RDNA 3.5, which is going to be part of Strix Point. So Strix Point, the Halo SKUs, including, well, uh, basically Sarlacc, but that will not be discrete. So RDNA 3.5 is purely, at least to my understanding, only going to be for APUs and RDNA 4, which we'll talk about more in a moment, uh, is going to feature N44 and N48. They're going to be um, decent in performance, but they are not going to have Halo SKUs because they've been cancelled, which of course we're going to be uh, MCM based. And uh, so N44, N48 are going to release. Um, and there is not, to my understanding anyway, going to be any um well basically apu variant so the successor for for example strix point eventually is going to move on to well rdna5 for its I igpu it's going to be very interesting to be honest to see what amd does with zen 6 i've spoken quite a lot about the um rdna5 performance numbers and rdna uh, sorry a zen 6 excuse me 
The IPC gains are not so big from my understanding, but there is a significant difference in the packaging. So it essentially uses a 2.5D chip interconnect, and this is gonna be for the CCD and IOD. One way to think about it uh, as a very simplified explanation is a bit like N31 with some inherent differences. Actually, uh, Sarlacc, I I I'm hearing it's almost like a prototype version of the uh, packaging technologies that's going to be found in uh, Zen 6. Again, with some differences, of course. So it's going to be a very interesting architecture because it's going to offer a lot more bandwidth, especially with all the cache changes and so on. Now, obviously, these processors are not going to launch anytime soon. We're probably going to see them maybe in 2026 is my guess. Maybe a little bit earlier, but... I do still feel that they're going to be on the AM5 platform. I heard some mixed stuff about that, but um, ultimately speaking, uh, Zen 6, from what I'm hearing right now, is still going to be based on DDDR5 memory and PCIe Gen 5, so they certainly could make it, theoretically, on the same platform. It would depend whether they feel they need, like, something else changed for example extra power delivery or maybe extra io for something else or perhaps they you know need a larger socket um i still think that the number of a uh, chip uh, cpu cores is probably going to be eight so it's going to be a very interesting architecture with that said let's move on to rdna4 now i'm trying to solidify a few things regarding rdna4 and rdna5 i actually meant to have a video up earlier uh, well, actually on the weekend, but I got some last minute updates. But what I can tell you guys right now is I am pretty confident RDNA 4 is not going to be revealed at uh, Computex. And I am thinking it's probably much more likely at this point, at least according to everyone I'm speaking to, to be late this year. So as of the time I'm recording this, of course, that's 2024, maybe early next year. And RDNA 5, of course, is going to be the architecture where we have high-performance uh, GPU designs from AMD. So that basically will mean that uh, N31 is not going to be outperformed, at least on a typical workload, by RDNA 4. There will probably be some niche scenarios, maybe with like ray tracing and so on in certain you know applications or whatever. But as a general rule of thumb, it seems that we're looking at maybe um, a little bit faster than a 7900 XT at best, maybe a little bit slower, something like a 7900 GRE, depending again upon the application. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens on the GPU market. Obviously, Intel's Battle Mage is going to launch later this year as well. So there's certainly a lot of competition. Um, ultimately speaking, things are kind of quiet at the moment. NVIDIA obviously launched the RTX uh, 40 Super Refresh, which had modest success in the market but obviously again rtx 40 has been out for quite some time now so a lot of folks are just kind of biding their time it's like let's just hypothetically say you've got an rtx 3080 or 3090 or like a 6900 xt or something along those lines and you're like well i could upgrade but maybe i should just wait like Sure, there's some good games coming out this year, but let's be very honest. It's not like a 3080, for example, is struggling in games right now. So I could certainly understand the, um, the, 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 the appeal of waiting, let's just say. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now. Oh, and sorry for not being on camera. Normal, res uh, normal service shall resume tomorrow. It's just been kind of one of those days where I've been running around all day. So yeah, normal, normal uh, service tomorrow. <laughs>